Reddit. What's your best no time to explain? Let's go. Story? A few years back my brother pulled up to my house with a paintball gun and told me to get in. He hands me the gun and says you'll know when to shoot. We go on a short drive to a corner where some kids began to egg his truck. I knew when to shoot. But my archaeology crew and I were stuck in La Paz, Bolivia because of civil unrest that cut the roads leading to our dig site. We had been hanging out in La Paz for two weeks, trying to stay as warm as possible, and waiting for any opening in the demonstrations. The Bolivian army fired into a crowd, killing several demonstrators, and both sides call a truce for 24 hours. That morning our professor ran into our rented apartment and yelled for us to grab all our gear. We have 5 minutes to leave. We had no idea what was going on. The prof took the next combi, and my poor Spanish skills meant I couldn't ask questions of my fellow passengers. We boarded one of the first combis out of La Paz and head out to the Altiplano. On the road we pass huge roadblocks, burning tires, piles of broken glass, and various debris with just enough room for a small car to make it through. The roadblocks resumed that night, we made it far enough to hike the remaining 12 hours to the site next day, and then we started digging. Archaeology done right. Went to a bar w some friends and my parents in my hometown for my 21st birthday. Turns into a good 6 hours of drinking. Went to the bathroom and while closing the lid after finishing, the entire bottom of the bowl shatters. I was legally drunk for my first time in said bar and proceed to urge very loudly that we needed to leave. No, I don't think you understand. I destroyed a toilet let's go. There is just something about the destruction of a toilet that makes any story enjoyable. When I was 8, my parents took me over to their friend's house for an early dinner party. They had a daughter my age who was also my friend. She was really into animals and nature, so she wanted me to go with her about a block down her street to investigate a bird's nest she saw earlier in a tree. We go, she starts climbing while I'm on the ground watching. Then, about half a block away, this hippie looking surfer dude with long blonde hair and wearing nothing but shorts, walks out of this house and notices us. I notice him for about 2 seconds and then look back up in the tree at my friend. Next, I hear a loud whistle and when I look back in the direction of the surfer dude, he has his shorts down around his ankles with his willy whacker out in all its glory. I yell run. My friend is clueless, but somehow she manages to jump out of the tree and we run back to her house as fast as our pint sized legs will carry us. Luckily, my dad and her dad were right inside and when I yelled there's a naked man chasing us they were outside almost immediately. They find the surfer dude standing right in front of their driveway. I remember my dad saying hey man, are you pulling your pants down in front of children and the guy responding with something like frick you, man and then walking away. The amazing thing is that we called the cops and they came over to file a report, but they recommended not pressing charges because the guy knew where we lived and might seek revenge. This was back in the mid 1970s. I would have kicked his butt if I were your dad. Hurricane Charlie was going to do a normal ride out the storm situation and play video games and eat junk food all weekend while it rained outside. I got a call from a buddy who'd said the hurricane just turned 90 degrees and made landfall in Sanibel, like 20-25 miles away. I rushed into my roommate's room and said grab two days worth of clothes. We're getting the frick out of here. When we came back to the house it had been destroyed. The roof leaked and held water in the ceiling until it completely caved in. Completely destroying everything we had in there. I was in high school and espied a hot girl waiting for the bus. Being me and knowing I would just awkward all over myself if I tried things the normal way. I got on my best panicked face. Ran up to her. And said. Quick. Quick. There's no time. I need your phone number. She blurted it out. I actually kept it my head until I could get it down on paper. And called her that night. We've been together for 13 years. I own a skate shop and it was also a popular hangout for skater kids. I was off one day and I get a call from a ecstatic skate kid that sounded in panic saying get to the shop now click. I rush down there. Two minutes later, Anthony Kiedis walks into the shop. One of the kids had run into him in town and convinced him to come into the shop. All the skater kids are in my shop behind the counter with my employee pretending to work on things. Put skateboards together. 
etc. It was hilarious to see them try to act naturally, and we all got to have a good conversation with Anthony Kiedis about skating, paddleboarding and kiteboarding and he signed a girl skate deck for our wall of fame that I still have. He's been back every year since then and is a regular customer. This past summer I delivered paddleboards out of his vacation home. Got a phone call from my sister one evening and when I picked up the phone she was clearly running and out of breath, I could just make out her saying open the front door before the line went dead. So I ran to the front door picking up the heaviest thing I could find along the way, it was a climbing helmet BTW, wrenched the door open and moved out the way just in time to see her bolting into the house past me. I slammed the door and wait for her to catch her breath. There was a giant freaking pheasant chasing me all the way from Tesco. Her. Don't worry mom. I've got this. With that, I donned the climbing helmet and told her to call the police if I wasn't back in 5 minutes. When I was about 13, my buddy and I rode our bikes to the local Kmart to be bored obnoxious teenagers, tossed some Nerf footballs over the aisles, ran around, mocked things. Then I thought it would be funny to spray my buddy with the perfume sample. He didn't think it was funny at all, and started chasing me. I ran and hid, and the hunt was on. Using his finest ninja skills, he snuck around until he saw me, crouched down in the hardware aisle. He crept up behind me, put his butt right next to my head, and let rip. He turned around to gloat and, it wasn't me, just some poor schmuck looking at hammers. The next thing I know, he runs by me, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. Glad no one was around to hear me sputter laughing so hard at this. Monash Campus, Australia, hanging around my dad's office, he lectured there and I got to come in sometimes. Whole campus gets evacuated, someone runs in, tells my dad there's a kid shooting people and to get the heck off campus. My dad rushes off, and I'm sitting there, 11 years old, with the face of, well, frick, now what, tl, dr, father forgets son during shooting on campus, parent of the god dang year. I was in high school, and my friend came running up to me and said, no time to explain I need your shoes I spent the rest of the day walking around the school in socks and some makeshift shoes made out of a cardboard box. I later found out that the reason why my friend needed my shoes was so that he could participate in his chem lab class and not fail due to his not wearing shoes. My brother is 11 years older than me and stayed with my dad when my rents divorced, so I never really got to live with him when we were young. When I was about 14, he barged into my room at 4am and told me to pack your crap for 4 days. Our flight leaves in 2 hours. Soon after I was on a plane, turns out. He had planned us a trip to Colorado to go snowboarding and told no one but my mom. One hour before he told me. Brothers are so awesome. Also don't forget to do your part someday. My dad working in the WTC. Heard a huge crash several floors above him. Boss looks at him and says no time. Let's go. He lived. Holy crap. About 11 or 12 years ago I was taking my dog for a walk in the forest behind the local elementary school. He seemed all anxious to get off leash so I unleash him since I figure he wants to run around and pee on everything. The moment I let him off leash he starts barking at me. In hindsight, my best guess at what he was trying to convey was no time to explain. Let's go. And then he bolts. I'm pee off and start chasing after him but he was god dang fast even by dog standards. Turns out on the other side of the woods, there was a middle aged guy who had exposed himself to a group of young girls. They ran away screaming and he was trying to make a grab for one of them. It was at this moment that my dog came bursting out of the woods like Lassie or in Tintin or some crap. My dog was popular among the kids, so they knew him. They screamed his name and ran towards him. The diddler bailed, with his Johnson still hanging out of his pants. I was fully prepared to reprimand my dog for being an butthole. Then I found out what happened. He got steak for dinner. Freshman year in college at a school in Boston. Sick as a dog. New found ROTC friend with similar tastes as myself comes running into my room and tells me he needs me. I tell him I'm sick and can't go anywhere. He refuses my denial and forces me to come with him. Flash forward 45 minutes in a car and we are arriving at Gillette Stadium. Turns out there is a Halo 3 tournament being held for army recruitment purposes. 
He is very aware of my Halo skills due to the sleepless night we spent when Halo 3 first came out. Ended up placing second and along the way beating Jared Mayo. He was physically upset and said he wanted to kill me. Felt awesome to beat a professional football player at something. All of this occurred in the box seating of an empty stadium which we have an amazing view of. So surreal. My wife and I went to Scandinavia in the winter for our honeymoon. First Copenhagen, then Helsinki, then Northern Finland. Yes, this is an odd choice. Our flight got diverted, and en route to Copenhagen, our luggage, including all of our winter gear, was lost, and the airline was unable to locate it for the four days we were in Copenhagen. However, we made friends with one of the customer service agents at the airport. We returned to the airport on the day of our flight to Helsinki, still with no luggage, and dreading the arctic cold we were about to fly into. Temperatures were in the single digits in Finland, but unable to do anything about it. Magically, we found our luggage at the airport that morning, and went through security to our gate. It was about half an hour before boarding, when our friend from customer service, on the other side of the airport, ran up to us and said, follow me and don't ask any questions. We don't have much time, and there is something I must do for you. Then he led us through a series of back hallways in the airport to his office. What I'm about to tell you, you must tell no one else, he said. In 20 minutes, our pilots are going to announce a strike, and all our flights will be grounded. This was in no way public knowledge. He put us on another flight to Helsinki with a different airline, and we watched in gratitude and amazement from the Finnair terminal as the strike was announced, and our original flight, along with every single other SAS flight leaving Copenhagen, was grounded. Epilogue. We found ourselves in Copenhagen again a year later, and we went to the airport specifically to try and find our friend and thank him, but it was his day off. I'd ask credit to pass on my thanks, but I'm pretty sure what he did was against company policy and I wouldn't want to get him in trouble for doing a good deed for a young couple. I was at a house party over the summer that started going a bit south, so, my friend and I decided to just get in the car and drive home. We got to the car and were waiting for the third guy in our group when a very, very drunk guy came up with his red solo cup of beer. We were friendly to him, asked him what he was drinking and all. He decided the best reaction to this was to throw the beer at me while I sat in the car. After this happened I noticed a group of about 7 or 8 more drunk people ambling towards the car. They did not look happy. My friend decided the best response to this was to go to the back of his car, grab his shotgun and two shells. Oh freak. He stood next to his car with the drunk bastard slowly approaching yelled at them once get away from my car while loading the shells. They did not stop. He fired once into the air away from them, cocked the gun, and said again get away from my car. About one stroke three left after that so he fired once more and the rest scattered. He had just fired a gun at a house party. Twice. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Our friend then came out of the house screaming. No time to explain. Let's go. We never went back to that house. TL. DR. Nearly drunk and brawl broken up by shotgun. Sounds like zombies bro. Lucky escape. Walking home from playing football in the park and my dad. Aggressively speeding down the road in his car. Breaks hard next to me. He looks angry as frick and my little brother is crying and he sternly says get in. I roll with it and he speeds around the park looking attentively out the window. My little brother points at a group of lads, maybe 16 17 years old. One of them is running with my little brother's glasses. He is only about 10 years old. My dad jumps out the car rugby tackling the lad to the floor. My dad is huge, and the lads look petrified. My dad absolutely bulls at them for about 5 minutes. After that he gets back in the car and then we go to McDonald's. Bull so hard m try and find me. A little over 2 years ago, I was in an abusive marriage. I had realized that the abuse was never going to stop, and told my husband that I was going to divorce him. The next day, he acted as if nothing was wrong and he had accepted that I was moving out as soon as I was able. He was working until midnight, so he wasn't home yet when I went to bed. I woke up later to my husband twisting my arms behind my back and slamming his head into my face. He kept me pinned down for what felt like an eternity. 
Out of sheer desperation and despite how much it hurt, I somehow was able to get out of the hold eventually, and ran into the bathroom with my phone, slamming the door shut with my body just in time. I called every close friend I had, but no one would pick up the phone. It was now after 3am. I had been pinned down for over 2 hours. I finally overcame my shyness and texted a co-worker I had recently met who just happened to live nearby, and who had also told me that he stays up most of the night. I texted are you awake and got the response yet. Scared that my husband's efforts to pick the lock on the door would soon prove fruitful, I decided to take the chance and make a run for it. I shoved my cell phone into my tank top and calculated the location of my coat, shoes, and wallet. When I burst out of the door, my animal instincts took over. He threw me on the ground. I jumped back up. He grabbed my arms. I twisted away. I was able to grab my shoes and nothing else, but that was enough. I ran down the hallway barefoot, and then into the snow and 10 degree Minneapolis winter. I hid by the building for a moment, putting on my shoes, and then ran to my co-worker's apartment. Downtown Minneapolis is a scary place even if you're not dressing in only a tank top and sweatpants at 3am. But I ignored the calls from random people on the street and kept running. Once I was outside my co-worker's apartment, I suddenly became truly scared. What if he wasn't even home? I made the phone call. I'm outside. I'll explain later. Please. Please. Can you let me in? My co-worker came downstairs a moment later. A bewildered look on his face. His reaction upon seeing me there, barely dressed and shivering in the snow, was simple. Jess. What the heck? Two years later, I'm divorced and the happiest I've ever been. That co-worker is the best friend I have ever had. And I'm so grateful to him for letting a girl he had just met into his apartment at 3am without any explanation. I was at a sporting event with some friends. Wow it was 10 years ago. Now I feel old. The bleachers were metal benches on concrete and set up amphitheater style. Going down a hill and all the concessions and bathrooms on the top of the hill behind us. It's about half time and I'm thirsty. I also see that it's starting to cloud up. I tell my friends I'm gonna go grab a drink and be right back. I walk to the top of the stairs and I see the biggest, nastiest thundercloud I have ever seen and it's about to crap bricks right on top of us. I hold Bud down the stairs, grab the friend closest to the aisle and yell. We gotta go it takes a second for it to register but everyone grabs the important crap and then follows me up the stairs, across the food court and into the bathroom. Suddenly the temperature drops by at least 10 degrees, the wind gusts, the last friend and almost lost her hat. Seconds later we hear a huge clang on the tin roof of the bathroom, and then another and another. Then out the door we see golf ball to orange sized hail everywhere. TL. DR. I saved my friends from being caught in bleachers in a nasty hailstorm. It was the middle of the night on a road trip with a friend. She's a city mouse. I'm country. I was driving, she was sleeping, and I started to get sleepy. So I pulled off the highway onto a barely paved road and followed it for a while until I found a wide shoulder to pull off. I parked and we got out so she could have a cigarette. There were loads of stars and we leaned against the car having one of those hushed middle of the night conversations. Then I heard rustling in the woods 8 feet from us. At first I ignored it, but then I realized there was a pattern. I'd hear it at the 10 position, then at 2, then back to 10. It was more than one thing making the rustling noise, and they were getting closer, and I realized something was hunting us. So I put on my power voice and told her get in the car. Her eyes got wide and she hopped in really quick. I jumped in and we took off back to the highway. She turned to me and asked was it an axe murderer or something I told her no, it was probably wolves. And she got mad at me for scaring her. She didn't see how wild animals stalking us could possibly be dangerous. To be fair, wolves aren't really a danger to humans. They are more afraid of us than we are of them. At least here in Norway there hasn't been a single death to wolves since they started keeping track of it some 250 or 300 years ago. Doing some bodywork on a Cessna 350 when my buddy comes running into the shop with his eyes nearly bugging out of his head. Friend, goldfish, come on, follow me, me, what is it, I'm busy. Friend, just come here, gesturing wildly for me to follow, me, I have to finish this work, is it important? Friend, losing patience in all of his excitement, just follow me it's important. 
Me. I'm not going unless you tell me what it is first. Friend. Kaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
and he hops in and tells me to drive around the corner to the golf course. I'm skeptical, but I go for it. We arrive, and he runs into some bushes and comes out with a 24 pack of beer. I laugh, pay him, and ask if there's more. Yeah, if you buy 10 I'll sell them to you for $10 bucks each I gave him $190 more. He runs towards the bushes, looks back at me and yells well you're gonna come help me with them. Or what I follow him to the bushes, there is a skid full of cases of beer. We take 19 more and load them into the back of my taxi van. I get the nice gentleman's phone number for next time, and we say our goodbyes. Fast forward 15 minutes. I've driven home, it's 3am, I was living in a house in a row of townhomes, neighbors surely hear me pull up, open and slam my door, I run in, wake up my roommate, and yell no time to explain, let's go he rushes downstairs, puts on shoes and follows me back to the cab, I open the rear doors and his jaw drops, where did you find this no time to explain I respond, so here we are. My half naked friend and I running 20 cases of beer from the street to my house at 3am. I am amazed that no neighbors had awoken and looked out their windows and called the phone number on the van. When we finish and I had time to explain, my roommate gave me $200 and we went and got another 20 cases. This time from a skid hidden behind some trees at a park on a local lake. TL. DR. Bought 20 cases of beer from an Indian. Woke up rumored at 3am to help rush it into our house. We built a wall between our kitchen and living room with cases of said beer. Dad hit me up on the 29th of January, 1999 at about 11pm and said get up, we're gone on a trip. So we left. I got to see my hometown titans play the Rams in the Super Bowl that next day in Atlanta. One of the coolest memories I have. Turns out he was randomly offered these tickets. So it was a let's go moment for him also. Best I've got is I was sitting in my room playing Halo I think it was and my dad randomly bursts into my room and just says grab your knife and meet me in the backyard and he ran back downstairs. Turns out our dog wound up cornering a possum in our yard and the possum was about to attack the dog. We managed to eventually pull the dog away before the possum fought back so it was able to run away. One day when I was about 12 my dad woke me up at my mom's house, fear divorced, really early on a Saturday and told me I had to go with him, but won't tell me why, it was very odd for my dad to be at my mom's let alone wake me up and drag me out of the house, but I did because he seemed really excited, so we drive down to the yacht club where my family has a boat, still having no idea why I am up and going somewhere with my dad at such an early hour. So we get to the docks and we walk to where they keep the big ol' yachts, we have a rather small motorboat we keep there, we ain't that fancy, and we walk to a huge cigarette boat called Endangered Species. My dad, who always finds a way to make friends with random people, begins talking to this guy that is standing next to a large dog crate and he introduces me. The guy then opens the cage and my dad's all smiles as a freaking baby tiger walks out. Obviously. I lost my crap and hit my knees as the most epic possible thing to walk out of a dog crate comes barreling over to me. I then got to play with this tiger cub for the next few hours and walk him and feed him and just do whatever a 12 year old does when he gets to meet a baby tiger. My dad and I never really had that tight of a father son relationship, but this by far is one of my favorite memories. TL. DR. My dad stole me to play with a tiger. If you are new to the channel. You can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. for now.